A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tutele. Today in studio, I'm joined by Mo Nasurio, Executive Financial Planner at NetBank, for a closer look at how to squash your debt and create wealth. Mo, a very big question that uh, many viewers often uh, uh, talk about, managing debt whilst controlling wealth. But maybe if we do paint a picture of the environment that we're dealing with at the moment, one would obviously say that it's not easy to tackle these two tasks at the same time right now. No, no, it isn't. Um, it isn't easy to tackle that task, and especially since um, uh, we've got responsibilities to take care of. Um, you know, I'd like to bring up though that, um, you know, um, Olive Gumedi was quite fortunate to win um, her share of the Things That Really Matter competition and she was able to squash her debt. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really great. It's a really great story and fantastic story to, to tell, but you cannot just stop there. You've got to um, stay out of debt and refrain from getting into it. Let's go back to Olive Gumedi. Yeah. Describe her. What were some of the challenges that she dealt with? Did she have a shoe and cosmetic fetish like I do or like some of my other colleagues are spending a bit too much on uh, the, the, the fun side of life and not yeah. really uh, getting down to uh, creating their wealth? Yeah. Look, I think the, thing, the, the reality is that um, we're all hardworking individuals and, and we make mistakes. We make mistakes. But what we do have to realize is that to get out of those mistakes, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to make sacrifices and be willing to, to work hard to get out of this because not all of us are going to be fortunate to win a competition and, and aid the reprieve mm. in terms of death. Mm -hmm. Talk to us then about uh, some of the strategies that we need to look at implementing yeah. and maybe let's start off with the paying off your debt part, yeah. which is not always so easy. No, it isn't always so easy. But I think the, the first thing is that you've got to have a goal. You've got to have a goal and, and then the next step is to have a plan to reach that goal. But that plan is only as good as the foundation. And the foundation is basically always saving, always have a plan to save, always having a budget, and then live be 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 below your means. It seems pretty obvious, but it's... The truth of the matter is that very few people live like that, Correct, though. yeah, but you need to live be uh, be uh, below your means. And then you've got to have something called the oh gosh fund. What happens if you have an accident or if you land up in hospital? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, for, and for you to be able to mitigate that, we recommend generally having three to six months worth of of your salary. But if I had to pause on the budget aspect of it for a sec, picture or imagine for a minute you went to a restaurant and you open the menu and you're like, ah, I want all of this, I want that, I want that, I want that. It's not practical, right? True. It's not practical because you're probably not going to like half of the stuff that's there and you're not going to finish all of the stuff that's there. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to focus on the meal that you want and then if there's, if there's appetite and if there's budget, you'll probably go for dessert. And that's what a budget really is. It helps you to spend purposefully every cent that you've, hard, uh, that you've worked hard for, as opposed to wondering where it's gone. Mm -hmm. So those are one of the, some of the principles that you need to have in place to have a budget. Make sure you eradicate debt. Make sure you have an oh gosh fund, your emergency fund, and then always be saving. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how easily we can do that, uh, or rather how difficult it can yeah. be, given the fact that we're facing rising interest rates. So maybe yeah. us loving our credit cards a little bit too much and not using the 55 days where it's interest free uh, comes back to bite us uh, uh, a little bit later on. And more importantly, wealth creation strategies and some of them that we can look to yeah. implement. So, so I like the idea of emotionally connecting to a goal. So if you set a goal and you emotionally connect to it, you're more likely than not going to stick to it. So, so take it for, for example, your family member is ill, or your mom is ill, and there's only an op one operation that's going to cure or help her. And that's only in 10, mon 10 months time, and it's going to cost 150,000 Rand. Sure. With your current circumstances, are you going to be able to afford that? Not in one go. Yeah, probably not. But the chances are you're going to want to afford that because it's your mom, it's your family member. So you're going to do everything in your power, and that might mean to sell the clothes off your back or take on another job, but you're going to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal. And that's in a similar vein, you need to commit to your goal in that manner. Mm. So firmly set a goal and commit to that goal. And then you need to take it step by step. So I personally like to subscribe to the snowball effect, and that's basically to, to sit back, look at all of your debt, list them from smallest to biggest, and then have a conversation with your creditors that you can pay the minimum to, to all of your, your debt, to all, to all your debt. What and once you've done that- it takes longer though? It might take longer, but you know, we, we um, finance is 20% knowledge and 80% behavior really. And we motivated by small little victories. So if you see that you've now committed your monies towards your smallest debt and you've now squashed that, you're probably going to be motivated to keep going until, until you carry on. You, you also do that by, by not only saving in the, in the sense of putting money away, saving also involves cutting back. 
Now, if you have a budget, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. if you have a budget and you know where your money is going and where you're spending, you generally know and you can identify where you can cut back and where you can pull back. Mo, let's take a look though at wealth creation strategies because it's all good and well for someone to get rid of debt and uh, find themselves in a position where they've got access funds and they're looking to save. But it must become quite tricky when it comes to choosing the right savings and wealth creation strategy and vehicle uh, which might meet the goal or need and objective at the end of the day. Yeah. It, re it can be difficult, but the truth is saving is really just putting money away as in when you can, whenever you have the opportunity. The hard part is to be disciplined and consistent with it. So we can talk about savings accounts and money markets and, and unit trust investments, but if you don't have that discipline, if you're not committed, emotionally committed to that goal, you're more likely going to stray. That shoe might be more important than that vacation or the financial freedom goal. Mm. So it's about committing to your goal for me and then looking to, um, uh, to identifying with that goal. So when you identify with that goal, so for instance, let's just, let's just take it, um, Olive Gumedi for, for that matter. If the principle stands true that if you were able to service 100,000 Rand debt at the minimum of 5% per month towards it, that, the principle says that you should be able to save 5,000 Rand a month on a regular basis. True. Saving 5,000 Rand a month after five years at a 10% growth rate, you're approximately going to end up with 500,000 Rand. Now, if that goal is real for you, you're more likely going to stick to that. That same goal, 10 years later, that 500,000 could easily be 1.7 million. And in 20 years, 11 million rand. Mm. Is that not something that you should commit to? Exactly. And also, as you say, understanding the power of the, the discipline, which also leads to compound interest, also playing its role in that generating and creating one's yeah. wealth, right? 100%. Fantastic. Let's get uh, your view then on a net bank perspective as to how you deal with clients, because financial journalists like myself and many other of my colleagues will report about the Brexit, about the financial meltdown that we're seeing, and yeah. equities and different market portfolios not working too well, which make, m may make uh, a lot of viewers a little bit more nervous about uh, their wealth creation strategy. So how then do we deal with the noise factors in one's conversation with a financial planner or advisor? Yeah. So it is important to um, have a financial planner by your side because he's going to be your sounding board um, when the jitters come into play, when that noise comes into play. And I think by having a financial planner by your side, you guys are going to put a plan together that's a plan for life. And he's going to remind you of that plan when the noise and the distraction comes in there. To, and will remind you to look to the future and look at long term as opposed to what's currently happening. So as much as it does have an, imp an impact on our current day-to-day -day lives, does it affect your long-term goal such that you need to withdraw from, from what you're currently committed to, to your savings? Um, so what we en endeavor to do as NetBank is to enable you with the pragmatic solutions today to enable your tomorrow. So we're looking to partner you with solutions, practical, sensible solutions that are custom-made to you to help you achieve your financial um, goals as well as attain that, the thing that really matters to you and perhaps that's financial security and independence. Mm -hmm. And I take it as always with the uh, discussions and strategy that financial planners and their clients implement, it's based on your needs. And uh, an important conversation always needs to take place when there's major changes, right? Getting married, having a child, or potential divorce in the pipeline, or losing a loved one. Those are key uh, uh, areas of life where it's even more critical to have conversations with your financial planner, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, <coughs> our journeys are different. I mean, we come from different backgrounds. But the journey is generally the same. It's very similar. Uh, you've got your, your, your typical points like being married and having a child. So you need to review the plan quite regularly. And, and by partnering with a financial planner who's got your best interests at heart, you're not partnering with just a, plan, a financial planner for a plan for now, but rather a plan for life. Exactly. That's what we want to hear. The long-term strategy, certainly. Well, we've certainly said quite a bit, but let's get a quick recap now on the key takeaway points from tonight's discussion. Mo, we've certainly said quite a mouthful, but for the viewers <coughs> out there, like me too, who would love to be like Olive Gourmet and win 100,000 Rand, yeah. but if we can't, what can we learn from uh, the steps that she's implemented in her financial plan that we can probably copy and paste when yeah. it comes to our wealth creation strategies? Yeah. Well, you need to base your plan on the, on the basic foundations, on strong foundations, and that's to have a budget, to live within your means, to eradicate debt, and to always be saving. Mm -hmm. And once you have that in place and you've committed to your goal, emotionally committed to your goal, the likelihood of you succeeding on your journey to financial freedom is, is second to none. And if you can't go it alone, seek professional advice, right? Absolutely. And Ed Bank's here for that.
Fantastic. Mo, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing insights on uh, how we can navigate the difficult landscape uh, that a lot of South African consumers face. But that's where we leave it uh, tonight. A big thank you once more to Mona Surio, Executive Financial Planner at Nedbank. Uh, you can also share your feedback and comments and tweets with us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Gukum Fupi. And tell us exactly how you are looking to uh, navigate your financial planning landscape and hopefully in partnership with a professional. But until next time, though, we wish you a wonderful evening. It's goodbye for now. <laughs>